Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about cheaper welding rig ideas, if you will. It's been a while, I know. I'm Austin Ross, for those of you who do not know. I've been pipeline welding for about seven years now, and here on this channel I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. If those are videos that you're interested in, please make sure and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. Yes, it has been a while. I've took a couple weeks off, haven't posted the past two weeks. It's been good. Unfortunately, the past week, I've been under the weather, as you can kind of tell. Kayla's been sick also. I'm on the up and up from having the flu. Mm, 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 mm. Got a little sniffle, a little bit of cough still, but, but we're on the up and up, so that's good. Here on this channel, I talk a lot about getting started like uh, like slowly and not getting in over your head when it comes to being a pipeline welder or rig welder in general. Really this goes for pipeline in general because you might have a pipeline job for five months and you may not have a job for like two months or maybe even longer. So it's a good idea especially when you're just starting out to not get into a whole bunch of debt. And that's what I want to focus on in this video is just starting out. Now, I don't know your financial situation. I don't know, you know, you might have money saved and that's great. And if you can invest in a more reliable vehicle, then I, I would definitely suggest that. But say that you're just wanting to start out like around the house doing fence work or any kind of mobile rig welding, this would be a good option. It's kind of the same thing that I did. I'm gonna talk about what me and, me and my buddy did, or that's where these ideas come from. And I think it's a great way to get in without getting in too much debt right at first as far as starting to build a welding rig. The number one thing that I advise is look for an older pickup, obviously used, used older pickup, and it's 2020 now, right? By the way, happy new year. And uh, so like my first truck was a 95 Dodge, I still got it, 95 Dodge Ram, and it was a good starter. I was 17 years old, so in 07, I bought that truck for $5,500 with, it had like 211,000 miles on it. But $5,500 compared to, you know, 10 or $15,000, I mean, it's still decent money to be saved, you know? So that's what I advise looking for, something less than $10,000 if you can find it. Obviously, what comes with buying used is you might have to do maintenance or repairs on these old trucks. So that's one of the downfalls in buying one of these cheaper vehicles but that's why I mentioned starting out around the house, being closer to the house. That way you're not taking off down the road, you know, 20 hours from the house and breaking down and, and everything else, you know. Uh, if you do break down, it's like a couple miles to town, you know, a tow truck bill isn't gonna cost you an arm and a leg to get it somewhere where you trust somebody to work on it. So, older used pickup, and here's another pointer that I did not do, but my buddy did. In high school, he had a two-wheel drive diesel. Two-wheel drive just means cheaper, right? I mean, you can get it for cheaper. I, it's unheard of nowadays. I know, like, who wants a two-wheel drive? But, I mean, if it means getting started, like having your own truck to put your own welding machine on and start doing work, then, I mean, it could be an option. So consider looking for a two-wheel drive. Gas motor might also be a little bit cheaper than a diesel. I've looked a little bit and I'm not partial to Dodges, but the reason I bought a Dodge back in the day was because growing up in high school, me and my buddy always heard that these uh, Cummins, these Dodge Cummins could get up to a million miles and that was just, that just blew our mind. So to us, it was like a solid truck mechanically, you know? So as far as the mid eighties to mid nineties Dodges or late nineties Dodges, that would be a good range to buy in. Uh, still might have issues with them, but it's a good solid pickup to think about having, you know, and definitely have a good trusted mechanic in your area. Check out these trucks, you know, maybe even call them before you go purchase it, you know, or um, if you know somebody well enough to that knows a little bit more than you do, have them come with you to come look at it or, or whatever, you know. Um, definitely do your research, check underneath the hood, Make sure it starts up, take it for a test drive. I mean, you know, the typical thing we're looking for use, you know. So yeah, that's that's some ideas. So usually I mention like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and I don't have a, I don't get on Facebook Marketplace. I don't hardly know how to, but a couple of my buddies do. And that seems to be the, the happening place when it comes to selling used stuff nowadays. 
So I always throw that in there whenever I'm suggesting people to find used anything, welding bed, truck, welding machine, anything. But so <clears throat> to give an example of, of a good amount of money, like kind of what it takes, we've done a video on our channel um, a couple of years ago about like what it costs to put together a welding rig, you know, like a used one, like what I start out with, and then like a newer one, like what I have nowadays. But real quick in this video, I'll kind of give you an idea. I paid 5,500 for my Dodge, and then it didn't have a bed, so I had to build a bed or buy a bed. I ended up finding a bed, an old used bed for, like real old bed for $750. That was like a steal. That's not like a common deal to come across. But I mean, any flat bed or you could bathtub it, you know, to get by for a while. So $5,500 for the truck. I paid $3,500 for my, for my first welding machine. So roughly $9,000 with my first welding truck and my first welding machine. First welding machine was an SA200. It was a 80s model. I don't know exactly what year. I want to say an 82, but I'm not sure. Another option you could go though, as far as a weld machine, is if you were starting out around the house, like I'm kind of suggesting. When it comes to buying equipment for just mobile rig welding, you don't have to have an SA200 or any of these bigger diesel machines. You can use a Lincoln GXT or a Miller Trailblazer, Trailblazer, Bobcat or anything like that. Those types of machines, those gas machines or Hobarts or whatever would work just fine for fence or anything else. I say anything else, like as far as like, I'm gonna stick with stuff like fence, metal barns, you know, uh, just any type of smaller structural type stuff. It'll, it'll work for It'll work for all that just fine. Work for a lot of things just fine. I just don't ever see those type of machines on pipeline work. That's the only reason I don't suggest them to those of you who, who watch my YouTube channel. But if you're looking to, I mean, you can always upgrade. So, and, it, and they're not always cheaper, you know, but you can maybe find, you know, a Trailblazer, an older Bobcat or something for $1,500 versus, you know, a $3,000 200 or something. So I mean, they might not always be cheaper, but if that's what you can get your hands on and you can make some money with it, I would say it would be a good option. So there's always that idea also. Okay, so we got $9,000 in my first. Okay, so as far as like your tools, um, I haven't just broke down the list of essential tools needed. I actually have a list of essential tools needed to get started as a rig welder. You can find it on my website arosswelding.com under the resources tab along with several other lists very helpful list but uh, I, I haven't broke down that that list as far as the prices on everything I don't think or if I have I don't know exactly what it is but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's thousand two thousand dollars could be so we'll say eleven twelve thousand dollars maybe including the central tools and the bottles because if you're going to be working at home you want to get your own bottles and you can either rent your own bottles from most welding supplies or some welding supplies will let you purchase your own set of bottles i suggest air gas if you ever plan to travel because air gas is nationwide so when it comes to swapping your bottles no matter where you're at in the country wherever the closest air gas is you can go and swap that bottle renting them which is what a lot of people do I think I pay less than 100 to rent a set of bottles a year, $100 a year, but it obviously depends on where you're going. Air gas probably a little higher. Um, I, I use the welding supply that I worked at right out of high school. <clears throat> as far as purchasing your own set of bottles, I think it's roughly $600 a piece, $600 for your acetylene, $600 for your oxygen to buy your own set of bottles so you own the set of bottles. Um, you'll still swap them out, but you don't have to pay a yearly lease, you know, so do the math, $1,200, you know, uh, I guess it'd take you 12 years, but if you're doing this long term, I've bought one set of bottles and I still rent one set of bottles, so, um, but as far as pipeline work, if you're looking to pipeline work and that's what you're, you've already got connections and you're going on a pipeline job, you shouldn't have to have your own set of bottles. It's always nice to have at the house, to have your own set, so I'm glad I gave you that advice as far as getting your own set. But as far as going on a pipeline job, most pipeline contractors are gonna supply the bottles, so you don't even have to have them to go on pipeline work. In most cases, there are contract jobs where you'll have to have your own. To round it off, I had roughly eleven or $12,000 in my first welding rig. That's just starter costs. That's not maintenance, that's not, you know, buying new tires, that's not, I mean, that's, that's not insurance, I mean, that's, 
that's just the basic like cost just to give you an idea of what like you need to be saving for or whatever but but yeah i hope this video was helpful and uh please excuse my rasp voice old radio voice today before i wrap up this video i wanted to invite you to my a ross welding inner circle for those of you who may not know i wanted to invite you to it it's a networking uh, place that my wife and I have created for rig welders, pipeliners, and their families. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can find it on my website also, arosswelding.com, under join my inner circle. You can read all about it there. We're looking forward to having you in there and uh, watching you grow and, and things like that. So let us know where else we can help you in any way, in any shape or form. Hope you guys are having an awesome start to your new year. Thank you for watching this video and remember, Learn something every day.